Now imagine this, you just signed your first overseas basketball contract. You get over there, but you only have maybe one hour, two hours to relax before you make your debut game as a rookie, as a professional player. Now the heat is already gonna be turned up on you because in overseas basketball, the demand for you to perform is gonna be very high no matter what, no matter the circumstance, no matter the situation, you're gonna have three strikes, three opportunities to play well, and if you do not play well within those three opportunities, then chances are that you're probably gonna get cut. First one, I call it the debut game. This is obviously the first game that you have whenever you have signed with a new professional club. There will be some leniency, some leeway that the team will give you because they may understand that you just traveled, be tired, you may not know the plays, coach, how your teammates play, all of these different things they are gonna consider. But with that being said, I would not even take for granted that the debut game would even happen. When I was playing, there was a player who we signed and we had training camp for maybe two weeks, a week and a half. And sure enough, he wasn't performing in training camp. He wasn't playing well. And it honestly didn't even look like he would be a big asset to the team. We had one preseason game and they cut him. They cut him before we even got to the first game of the regular season. So that shows you that even before that debut game, say you have a practice or two, you better come in with the mindset of you're gonna kill it no matter what, because in first impressions are everything and everyone is on a tight leash. Okay, now after the debut game, you're gonna have your main test. Now this is your second game. And in your second game, this is gonna be really where you have to perform. Whether right or wrong, they're gonna start thinking that this is how you are actually capable of playing. If you score 10 points that game, they're gonna think that you're probably capable of scoring 10 points a night. You score 30 points and they think that you're a big time scorer. Whatever you put up in that second game, they're gonna think that that's actually your ceiling or what you're capable of doing. Now, there's many reasons for that. They're gonna think that, oh, you've been rested now, you have a few days underneath yourself, you know the plays a little better, you know your coach a little better, nerves are gone from the first game. The reality is that they can't actually wait for you to get fully settled because it is such a cutthroat and win now business in overseas basketball that if they waited for you to get going, if your team is performing poorly, then you may risk going into relegation, losing a lot of the fan base. And so that means the team is going to start losing money, sponsorships. So all of these factors are going to come into consideration. So the second game is really the crucial game where you have to perform well and show what you're capable of. And then finally, the third game, if you underperform for three consecutive games, you might as well start packing your bags because it's most likely that you're gonna get sent home. For instance, I've seen guys when they have underperformed for three straight games or even two straight games, the owner and the GM are in the stands or on the bench already calling up agents, looking for players and trying to find the replacement before the game has even finished. So that's why this third game, it really is your do or die game. Now, if you underperform in the first two games, but you play well in the third game, then there is a good chance that you just bought yourself some time because they may have thought, ah, he finally found his groove. Maybe he is actually capable of playing in this league, playing at this level. But if you underperform, Form for three consecutive games, then they're gonna think that that's a trend and that's pretty much what they're gonna get out of you. And like I mentioned earlier, with all of the different consideration of ticket sales and sponsors and money being lost, and most likely they will cut you if you underperform for three straight games. Now the big take home is not only to understand the cutthroat nature of overseas basketball, but it's also to understand the different demands in the different markets. So for instance, in Latin America, if you're coming there to play, for the most part, they're looking looking for guys to score the ball. They're looking for guys who can get buckets for them. So if you're going there and you're trying to blend in, just be another guy, another role player, then you're most likely going to have a tough go in Latin America versus if say you go to Europe, they may just want you to blend in and play your role because their nationals are more developed in that way. Now, if you can understand that beforehand, then chances are that you will come in with a different mindset. If you are going to Latin America and you understand that you have to kill it, you have to get buckets, then every time you touch the ball, I would think that you would be aggressive. Now, with all of this being said, of course, there are some exceptions to the rule. Some teams, they can't even afford to send imports back and forth because they can't afford the flight. They can't afford getting a new import. They can't afford scouting for a new import. So in that way, some foreigners are allowed some sort of leniency. So either way, that's just one thing that you have to be conscious of whenever you signed an overseas basketball contract, because I've seen this happen to too many players over the years. They don't understand the market expectation. They don't understand and the urgency that they have to play with. And then before they know it, they get cut after one, two, three, four, five games. 
And it's just an awful feeling to have. Also, it makes it harder for you to get future jobs, obviously, because now you have to explain to coaches, you have to explain to agents, why is it that you only played three or four games here? Did you get injured? Were you playing bad? How were your stats? And then you have to go through that whole scenario with them. So if you're interested in learning about the different markets and how they operate, then click on this video right here and I'll see you next time, all right? Peace out.